All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to Cincinnati Preschool Promise Preschool Chat. We, um, we have some very special guests and panelists here today to kind of talk about their experience with Preschool Promise, and we're happy to share this time with you. So we're going to get started by introducing or allowing our panelists to introduce themselves. So I'll go through and call on you. You can just give us a little bit about who you are and, and your experience with Preschool Promise. So uh, Micah, let's start with you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Micah Camrus. I'm a partner at the Maley Burke Law Firm, and I was a founding board member and remain a board member of Cincinnati Preschool Promise. Um, it has uh, been everything I think we all wished it would be during the initial campaign and then some. Uh, and it's been a real uh, privilege for me to get to see the organization get up and running from initial approver, approval from the voters to uh, the, the pretty incredible machine of change it has become. Uh, and I've, I've been lucky to be a part of that. Uh, it's, it's an important uh, organization for me and for where I volunteer. Uh, it's also, I have three young children. My oldest just graduated from preschool and started kindergarten and my middle, my middle child just started preschool. So uh, it's also very personal to me, the, the importance of preschool for, for my children and making sure that uh, all of the children here in the area are able to get that opportunity. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. And happy Preschool Promise Day to you. Thanks. All right. Too. Thank you. Toy Lynn, we'll go with you next. Hello, everybody. I'm Toylan O'Neill Turner. I'm the founding director of the Robert O'Neill Multicultural Arts Center and also the executive director of Queen City Foundation and a past Preschool Promise board member. I'm excited to be with you guys today and just um, value the foundation that preschool does for our youth and excited to be part of this panel staff. All right, thank you so much and happy Preschool Promise Day to you. <laughs> All right, Hector, let's go with you next. Good afternoon, my name is Hector Polanco. I'm the finance director of Cincinnati Preschool Promise and I also have been here since early on, not as early as Micah, but a few months after him. And, um, been here for five years and it's just been a wonderful opportunity to see this entity grow and expand and what it does for families in the Cincinnati preschool uh, and Cincinnati public school district. All right. Thanks, Hector. Okay. Kanitra, hello. Hello. How are you today? Been very well. Tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Kenitra Mathis, and currently I am the Program and Evaluation Manager with Cincinnati Preschool Promise. I actually joined the team in February of 2020. So I get a yeah. lot of joy and excitement of working with all of our providers um, and our littlest customers. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And um, I failed to introduce myself. My name is Kimberly Bowden, and um, I have had the pleasure of working with Preschool Promise, um, doing some contract work with recruitment, and um, also I've been a Preschool Promise parent in the past. So we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get a little bit further into the panel questions. But Thank you all, everyone, um, for being here. Now, are there any other panelists that I may have missed so far that may have joined us? Let's see here. I just joined. I apologize. I was on the call. I had to dial because I didn't have the um, Zoom app. But I okay. finally got it in. I am Vanessa King. Hi, Vanessa. I'm the admin at uh, Where the Sidewalk Ends Academy. And I'm gonna be honest, I did not hear your question as I was trying to get this Zoom up. Okay, yeah, we're just, just doing some short introductions of ourselves right now. So yes, you're right you on gotcha. time. Okay, well, I'm Vanessa King, as I said, and I'm the admin here at Where the Sidewalk Ends Academy. My husband, Stephen King, is actually the owner of the daycare. Um, we're excited to be a part of Preschool Promise. You know, we, we have children of our own. So it's like, okay, we knew the struggles we had with finding preschool and whether it be a financial struggle of having mm -hmm. to pay for it. We love the fact that Preschool Promise is here to help those who can't necessarily pay for it and give us the resources to be able to present to the people. 
I'm All not right. really sure Thank what happened you. here. So, <laughs> oh, we, we got you. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you for being here. We appreciate that. And happy Thank preschool you. promise day to you. Thank you. All right. And we have Brittany Pena here as well. Brittany, are you going to be one of our panelists today? I believe so. All but right. if not, awesome. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Yes. Tell us who you are. Right. I'm Brittany Pena. I am the quality improvement manager here with Cincinnati Preschool Promise. And like some of my fellow colleagues, I have been here um, since the beginning. So I've just reached my five year anniversary um, last month. All right, that's wonderful. And thank you for being here, Brittany. Uh, happy Preschool Promise Day to you and to everyone that is uh, tuning in and everyone that's on the panel and that is hanging out with us this afternoon. Thank you again for being here. So we're going to get into a few questions and um, I'll open it up with a, with a question. And as you see fit, just jump right in and, and we'll keep it going and I'll, I'll make sure I'll moderate this whole thing and keep us keep us on task, okay? All right, so I have a question. Um, what keeps you motivated as a part of the Cincinnati Preschool Promise Network, either as an educator for uh, early learning or either as an employee or a partner with the program? What would you say that keeps you motivated to keep going with this whole goal and the vision of Preschool Promise? Anyone want to go first? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say something well, first. Uh, <laughs> okay, Toy Land. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I think even in my introduction, I talked about the importance of the foundation piece that Preschool Promise provides. And I think that it's an exciting organization about how it began and how it started, but it's awesome to see the accomplishments that it's made over the time that it's existed in the short period that it's existed and the consistency and the leadership and the, the staff that I've got to be part of when I was on the board and got to work with and just see the endurance of the organization and how it really has impacted um, my friend's children and my own nieces and nephews as they um, go through their academic journey and knowing that education is one of the things that saves communities and actually pushes us to the next level of um, really appreciating humanity and growth as a community. Yes, absolutely. We have to start early with those things. Mm -hmm. So yes, wonderful. Um, Kanitra, did you have something you want to share? Um, one of the things that keeps me motivated is just seeing it all come together. Um, being a staff member uh, gives me the opportunity to work directly with a lot of the providers and teachers um, administering grants and different programs. So that's really exciting um, when I get to talk to them and hear what's actually happening in the classroom and at their sites. Um, it's always inspiring and gives you just the energy to wake up the next day, um, whether it's to work early or to work late. That always keeps me going. Um, and a few weeks ago, I had actually had the opportunity to go um, into one of the preschool sites, and that just warmed my heart and just made me want to keep going. Um, I actually had a little girl come outside of the classroom and blow me a kiss and it just melted my whole heart and I'm like I'm gonna go back home and just pull more numbers just for you to make sure we can continue to communicate our impact so um, whenever you get a special touch like that it lets you know um, right there in the moment who you're working for so that just keeps me motivated yes absolutely happy preschoolers inspire us all. <laughs> all right, Vanessa, what would you say um, as a provider, what keeps you going with keeping this promise alive? You know, what really keeps me going, and I would say, because my mom works here with us, that keeps us going with the children, is just, well, with Preschool Promise, is one, having all the resources and having you all back us on anything we may need, guide us in which direction to go, I know I've reached out to so many people in Preschool Promise. Kanitra is one of them. Brandy, they have always been there for us with anything we may need. Um, again, seeing the children, just seeing them advance and grow, it may be small, but to them it's huge. Seeing the parents light up, just knowing we have your support, that's what motivates us to keep going. 
All right. Sounds good. Now, you spoke about some, you know, being provided with resources through Cincinnati Preschool Promise. What are some of those kinds of resources that have been helpful for you? We've had a little bit of everything from the the books that you all give us. You've given us uh, laptops before we can have the children that, you know, some people aren't used to being on laptops. I mean, when the kids get introduced to it, they're like, oh God, I'm a big kid now. I get to do this. And it's like, but it's their age appropriate activities, but yet they get to get the feel of how big kids get to do their work and things like that from the computers to the, the pencils to the, you know, the papers, everything is definitely beneficial to all of the children. Even the ones outside of preschool promise get to benefit from it. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, Hector, so you've been with preschool promise um, basically pretty much from the beginning, correct? Okay, that's so what, right. what, what keeps you going? Gotta tell you, it's a combination of factors. Uh, I think the one of the main factors is that there's still much work to do. Even after all our accomplishments, there's still children who don't have access to high quality preschool in Cincinnati. And I just wanna make sure we find them all. But also I just have a great team. Like I love the people I work with and even the people I no longer work with who are hosting this panel too. So it's just a good situation uh, to do good with good people. Why, why wouldn't I? Exactly. I concur, <laughs> which is why I am back here again with you all. I really, um, as someone who my son um, benefited tremendously and our family benefited tremendously from um, being um, involved and having access to early education with preschool through support of Preschool Promise. Um, we were older parents. <laughs> we are older parents. We have a young one who is now um, actually in the third grade. So he kind of came in at the very beginning of the promise as well. And I have been an advocate for preschool promise from the beginning as a teacher, as someone who has worked directly, I mean, as a parent and someone who has worked directly with the program to try to expand and, and uh, grow the knowledge um, out toward the community about the program because it's so beneficial. And just to make sure that people are, first of all, aware of it is like a big part of this. So being able to spread the word and even now today through word of mouth, being able to spread the word about the benefits of Preschool Promise and how it can be so helpful to people who normally probably wouldn't think that they would be able to receive, you know, support and help from a community organization such as this. So it's been a blessing to me and my family, and I know working directly with other families as well, that it continues. And so I'm so glad to see that the community that the city, um, you know, really continues to support this program. So I'm very thankful that it is here and it still exists for those people who really need it. Um, Brittany, do you have anything? What What do you say? What What keeps you going? Because you you're one of those day oneers as well. I am. I am also a teacher by nature. Uh, so naturally, um, being able to um, support programs like where the sidewalk ends with um, learning materials um, and equipment um, to support student outcome and prepare them for kindergarten is like the most motivating thing that I do currently. Um, and then putting on the lens of an administrator, um, I am most motivated by being able to continue on with supporting teachers with um, credentialing as well as any other professional development opportunities um, they may need. Okay, thank you, thank you. I have a little addendum to that question. And given um, the environment and you know the time in which we're in and those 
times that we're hopefully coming out of that have been very challenging. One of you, either, either of you, um, what would you say um, that it is about preschool promise that was that was really able, the thing that helped you to continue to push toward you know, the mission and the goals of Preschool Promise, even during those very, very rough times um, that we had experiencing through COVID-19 and those kinds of things. I know that those were challenging times for everyone, providers, administrators, students, everyone, but we're still here. So what, what would you say would be one of the things or some of the things that really helped to continue to, to push, push through with the program? One of the things that we did is we made sure we stayed connected to our provider network. Um, Brittany was very instrumental. Um, Florence was very instrumental. Hector Shar, the whole team came together and we devised a plan to reach out to all of our providers. Everyone had a cohort or a list um, and we just stayed engaged and talked to our providers just about them, what they were going to, through and what they needed. Um, and we provided support just across the board. So if it was for their classroom or just for their family, um, and we just reached out to them and devised, um, res well, identified resources to help and fill the gap. So that was very um, inspiring and helpful to them and also helped us um, make sure that we stayed connected as a team. So it was it was really cool and really nice to show people that while we're concerned about your preschoolers and your business, we're concerned about you, just humanity as a whole. I yes. definitely second that too, Kanitra. Um, and I was just going to say, you know, having the leadership of Shara and allowing us to be flexible um, to sort of shift gears to figure out what is it that um, families need so they can continue the education with their young ones, whether they were um, at a pandemic child care site or if they were then at home with relatives, what could they do to continue their education? Uh, but then also finding out what did the providers need um, and whether it's towards your business, supporting you with staying afloat with your business um, or personally, because essentially you need to take care of yourself, your person, so that you could be, you know, the best um, child care provider um, that you are capable of being. Um, so I was just very motivated that we were able to switch gears. I would jokingly with Flo say, um, we became a social service program for uh, community child care providers. Uh, we were finding ways to make sure they had access to food, um, access to some of the um, PPE things, um, as well as um, providing them with different avenues to continue the educational programming with their students, again, whether it was in their facility or if they were at home. Yes, think, absolutely. Uh, Go I'll ahead. Carry on there with Brittany, mm -hmm. we even worked with the Hamilton County Emergency Management Agency to make sure that we were able to get them masks and we were able to get them uh, cleaning supplies and, and whatever they needed in order to not just take care of their children, but take care of themselves as well. Yeah, the, yes. the, the team did a pretty incredible job of pivoting to do whatever was needed to continue to support the mission during that time. And, and one thing I was particularly proud of too is uh, at a time of darkness where people need some hope, I don't think there's anything more hope inspiring than seeing children in a good environment, safe and successful and thriving. And uh, also at a time when so many parents were experiencing financial challenges and uh, downturn in the economy and loss of jobs that uh, parents could know that uh, our program was up and running and strong and that their children were in uh, good hands and quality centers with great teachers and um, could kind of spend their uh, day with at least the peace of mind of knowing their children were in good hands so they could focus on um, doing what they needed to take care of themselves and their families. Yes, I, I totally agree. And um, I was definitely a part of the team during the height of it all. And I remember that Shara was, um, you know, really specific about making sure that we learn this new environment, this new virtual space, so that we could be able to access those families and those providers and still be able to connect with them 
maybe not in person at times. There was a lot of times when we couldn't show up in person, but she made sure that we learned what we needed to learn about this, all this technology that we're now using even today, you know, to make sure that we were able to maintain those connections. So I definitely um, am able to concur with that as well. All right. <clears throat> so we'll move on to uh, another question and maybe something a little bit lighter since, since we're kind of talking about some dark times. But let's look at moving to a, a, a fun or funner question. Um, in your experience, uh, what have what are some of the uh, funniest or funnest uh, experiences that you've had working with preschool problems, either as an administrator or a provider or a teacher or parent or whatever it is? Give us some of those feel good moments. Hi, my name is Sydney. I'm the provider coordinator. And um, hi, Sydney. One, hi, Kim, how are you? Um, one of the, the funniest things that has happened with me with Preschool Promise is that I, um, I was reaching out to um, some of our Spanish speaking community. I was uh, learning Spanish at the time and there was a family who was interested in the um, promise and I spoke to the father of the family, but the mother of the family didn't speak English well and she called back and she thought I was cheating with her husband. So I got a really nice cuss out. Um, because I called for the promise. And that was the funniest thing that's happened to me since being with the organization. Well, that is funny. I'm so glad you were able to take it in stride, Sydney. Thank you for sharing that. That that was I wasn't expecting that one, but that's a good one. Thanks, Sydney. Anyone else? Well, I will say since I started in February of 2020, um, I thought it was pretty funny that I only got to work in the office for a total of, what was it, Hector? Approximately 30 business days <laughs> before we were absolutely shut down with the whole world. So I got to learn how to log into my computer, find out where my desk was, and meet everyone in person a few times before I had to order all of my office supplies for at home. So um, that was pretty funny. Um, I had to really pivot and learn on a dime, but I will say my in-office training was sufficient and awesome because I am still here um, in 2022. So it was really awesome and funny. We went to work and well, the funny part is how we went home. Shara was coming back from a cruise and we had just watched the news about what was going on in the world. And we were like, uh, are we going back to work? on Monday and everything was shut down. So uh, it was pretty funny. We thought we were going to be back at work on Monday, but everything um, in the city just kind of went black. So that was kind of my funny story. Uh, but now uh, we are still here, still doing great work. And I'm still excited to be a part of the team every day when I wake up. Thank you, Kanitra. Yes. Um, uh, does anyone else have anything they want to share? Some good times, some fun moments? Shara? Hey, Shara. Hi. So I just had to, I, I couldn't resist um, sharing a funny moment that I had. And I will say that was um, on the day that I came to interview um, to beg the board for this opportunity to work with the Preschool Promise. And I, I walked into a room of, correct me if I'm wrong, Micah, 19 people um, for an interview. After meeting with Toyland, that was great. It was the three of us. I was like, yeah, we, this is no problem. 19 people um, to ask me, you know, what was my commitment? And they were very serious because everybody in that room had worked hard, um, blood, sweat, tears, and reputation to make sure that the preschool promise was launched very successfully. And they asked me a series of questions and I did my best. Some of them I had prepared for, some of them it was just kind of the heart and not the head. 
And um, I got done and I don't know if it was a mic drop, but you could have heard a pen drop in the room. Dead silence. And I have um, never experienced that before. And it was a surreal moment where you realize you're in the right place at the right time for the right reason. And since that day, I have been preschool excited because I get paid to follow my calling and my mission to work in this community. And that's where it started. And I remember that pivotal moment. So I don't know if Mike and Toylan, you remember it the same way, but for me, it was kind of an out-of-body experience. Like, oh, I must have said the wrong thing because everybody got really, 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 really quiet. Um, but it, it was transformative for me. And I, yeah, I would say it was chills for positive reasons, Micah, probably you can ditto that. It was definitely exciting. And, you know, and I was going to share, I, I mean, you know, I think that, you know, great leadership is so important to this initiative and a great team is important to this initiative. And I think that, um, over the time that even I've been off the board, I've just seen wonderful things. So just always very proud. Um, and I always had um, many funny moments of trying to understand preschool compared to working in my high school world. Just like such a different drastic life of the babies versus the teens. Um, and uh, I think that um, you guys do an excellent job of, of teaching um, even the board what we needed to know to help you make the right decisions for the organization. The, the best decision our board was made yet on that day. So uh, a surreal experience for us too. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy you all made that decision. <laughs> and Shar, um, as a, a performer, entertainer, I know how it feels to hear silence after, after you said what you've had to say. <laughs> It's like, oh, um, was that good? Was that bad? I'm really not sure. But now we know it was excellent. It was excellent. All right. So Hector, um, you spoke a little bit about there's more work that needs to be done, right? So let's get into a little bit about what is it that you see or that you hope for the future, even the near future or the long-term future of preschool Promise. So for me, uh, I want to solve these problems, not just reduce the size of the problem. So there's still much work to do about understanding how we best reach those families, how we best convince them of the value of preschool. Because as you know, in some communities, grandma is preschool. And it's difficult for us to explain to them that grandma is great or grandpa is great or mom or dad are great, but going to the preschool should be part of that growth for the child. So just convincing them, finding them as our communities of change, um, really what programs are better to help the mission. We have three programs, but should we have a fourth? Should we change one for another? Should we change how the programs work? So for me, it's that part. And then once we have that thing cooked and beautiful, then we just export it wherever we go, whether it's Columbus, whether it's Cleveland, whether it's Miami or Colorado somewhere just spread the word about how we were able to fix this problem so that other communities can fix it as well. Yes, those are very clear um, goals and a very clear vision for our future. So thank you, uh, Hector, for that. that. That really added some context to this question. Um, is there anyone else that would like to, to chime in on that specific question concerning like, what do we see? Where, where do we go? What is it that we can do? Um, are our hopes for the future for preschool props? Um, mine is sort of piggybacking off of Hector, um, more pertaining to the quality improvement work. Uh, I'd like to see, and my hope is that 
um, all the providers that are currently participating in quality improvement will achieve their high quality rating and become a part of our tuition assistance network. And that way we will be able to reach more families, Hector, um, and provide um, quality care to those young, young people. Um, my long-term goal um, or hope for Preschool Promise, um, which I feel like might end up being closer um, to being obtainable than my short term um, is creating, developing a preschool promise early learning lab uh, where we could um, not only provide high quality education to preschoolers, but quality education to future teachers. Um, and that way we'll feed the pipeline. Um, Yes, and that is definitely very important to feed that pipeline with those those positive experiences so that we can uh, direct that pipeline in the, in the path that we really want it to go, right? <laughs> definitely. All right. So does um, anyone else want to chime in there? Micah or uh, maybe Vanessa, do you want to chime in on your vision for a future or what do you think um, could enhance or how we can grow even and be even better than where we are now? As far as for the future of Preschool Promise, at this point, we just want that, you know, they continue to help recruit, retain, and uh, sorry, sustain um, quality preschool for three and four year olds. Thank you. Uh, for me, it's just, uh getting better at what we do and figuring out how we can best prepare as many young people as possible to be successful in school. Uh, I, I don't think we'll ever get to uh, the point we'd all like to get to of serving 100% of students and uh, making sure every single one of them is as uh, well prepared as possible, but this team is gonna do everything it can to get as close to that as possible. Um, Cause I, th I think that's really the, the vision and the goal and uh, what we've been asked by the, the voters to do and uh, what, the people of the area have invested a significant amount of money in achieving. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree that we want um, to maintain definitely what we have going on now and to spread that and to get that out, um, you know, on a larger, wider scale. And I know I'm here for it. So <laughs> if anything, I am always going to be an advocate for Cincinnati Preschool Promise and an advocate for those young people to be able to get that early education that is so beneficial all the way throughout their whole education career. You know, it really jumpstarts them and it's, it's very important to have that. All right, does anyone else have any um, remarks or anything they would like to share specifically, maybe around something we've already talked about or, or just, Anything that you see that you want to, um, that you have to say, anything to offer. Um, and I could be open up to anyone that's that's in the group on the panel. So Tiffany, uh, you're there. I see you, Tiffany Ware. Uh, do you have anything that you would like to share? I know that you play a very pivotal role in making sure that the community is aware that Preschool Promise even exists. So do you have anything that you would like to share? I was trying to unmute because I'm driving okay. really, and it's really loud. I was supposed to be hiding in the background, Kimberly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's okay. I'll try to talk before I take off from this red light. I'm just, I'm always excited when Preschool Promise calls me in to like continue to spread the word and the message. <clears throat> I think this group does a phenomenal job in, in what they do, and I'm just excited to, that they even think about me when there are special projects that they need some a little bit of extra help with but <clears throat> I love doing community engagement that is like my passion I love connecting with people and I think that Cincinnati Preschool Promise could do a little bit more of that and I know it's often the need for volunteers or more people to get involved, but I would love to see that for Preschool Promise. There are a lot of times where we can hit people where they live with some lifestyle marketing. 
Um, and if we did a little bit more lifestyle marketing and we met people where they shop and we met people where they play and we, we did a little bit more of that, um, I think we would, we would, it would be easier to see numbers grow the way that we really want them to grow. But I'm just always excited that I'm thought of when it's time to help spread the word. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. It was very insightful. And, um, you know, those things do make a big difference. And so to be able to incorporate those things into the, the um, upcoming planning as far as, you know, really the marketing and getting it out there and getting the word and really spreading what Preschool Promise has to offer. So thank you for that. I'm, I'm very glad I called on you because that was some very insightful information. Thank you. Um, Anyone else? Um, I see, let's see here. Anyone else? Do we have any hands raised or anything? Um, Jacob, Jacob Stanley, are you there? Do you have anything that you wanted to add? Um, hi, my name is Jacob. Um, I'm one of the newest team members of part of the outreach and enrollment team. I work under Ms. Florence. Uh, one, it's a pleasure to meet all you guys for the people who don't know me. So yeah, I'm part uh, newest team member. So um, not much to add other than the fact that I just really enjoyed my experience so far working a part of a Preschool Promise. It's definitely been eye-opening, uh, definitely totally different from any type of job I ever worked at. So I just really love the experience that I have, the team that I work under. They're absolutely hilarious to me. If I can say one of my funniest moments is just every team holder we have every moment there definitely a bunch of characters and I really enjoy working on their own being a younger guy a part of the group too so it's a really really great experience and a learning experience I'm really happy to be a part of the team all right Jacob well welcome 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 yes I was I was a part of Flo's team as well so I know exactly where you are and what you mean it's always a good time that's for sure <laughs> always a good time okay um see here, Sharar, do you have anything else that maybe you would like to just kind of chime in on? So yes, um, again, I'm playing video games and how to make it work again. Um, I will say um, we are excited. It was part of Preschool Promise Day. I'm really proud of having a intense evaluation that we do. Um, you know, the theme for today was why we love Preschool Promise, but you know, I always ask, how do I get everybody to love Preschool Promise, right? And that is um, sharing the, the lift stories, the data, all of the information. So today also officially launches our speaking tour with our release of our annual report this afternoon. Um, we start reaching out to community groups. We will be visiting provider sites to talk to parents. We will be everywhere virtually and in person to really share the story of the promise and what's happened in the last five years and give people a perspective on what we think the next five years may look like, but really to hear from them on what they think the next five years should look like. And I think we are always positioned and we were hopeful that at the national level with everybody looking at early childhood education and the importance of preschool, that we would have, saw, we would have seen a movement for universal preschool in this nation. We were so hopeful. And when that didn't happen, um, you know, I, I went through about, I think a week of just being disappointed and confused and my team kind of said to me, you know, this is your opportunity to double down because no matter what the country said, this community said, we support early learning. So figure it out, right? And with that, I was inspired. And I, I would just say, um, our love comes from a place of we know it works, right? The vision that people had 10, 15 years ago to talk about the preschool promise, the hard work that Micah and Toy Lynn and all of our four founding board members did um, and it was a battle. You know, it looks very nice now, right? And everybody talks about how great our team is. They went to war to try to explain that this was worth an investment by the taxpayers. This was worth supporting people in the community. This was worth making a strong and sometimes unusual partnership with CPS and community providers to make this work because our children deserved it, right? And so I would say, I hope everybody as we go through this process, um, calls us, right? We have contact information and number. If you don't know about Preschool Promise and you wanna know, call and ask. If you have a complaint, we love to hear that. My team is all about complaints and quality improvement. You will leave with a smile, no matter what you come with. 
Um, that is our goal. And so we want to hear from you because the preschool promise is not just the people you see on the screen, not just the people that wear the badge, as I say, it is the entire community that has come together to make a change. And so we want to see more of that. We want to hear from you and we want to talk to you and tell you what's going on. So that's what I would say. We all love preschool promise. Absolutely. Absolutely. With that, um, I'll just open it up if anybody has any final words or any um, last thoughts uh, before we close out for the day and, and get back to work on keeping the promise alive. Any last uh, thoughts or comments from anyone? I would just like to say thank you to Vanessa King and Where the Sidewalk Ends. Um, since they are one of our providers, thank you for taking time out of your day to participate on this call. Um, yes. We always appreciate that, especially when you're taking time out of the classroom. Um, so thank, thank you, you so much. Me. Thank you. We appreciate you, Vanessa. Thank yes. you very much. We appreciate you all. All right. Okay. Well, Thank you to everyone for you know taking the time really to be here with us this afternoon to talk about all the wonderful things that we love about Cincinnati Preschool Promise so that we can keep this promise alive. And um, I'm sure we'll be back with you soon with more Preschool Promise chats and with more information and new updates on all of the wonderful things that are going on. But for now, have a wonderful afternoon and a great weekend ahead. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Good to see you. Bye -bye. You too.